All right, so we introduced this idea of systems. There are systems of matter, there are systems of energy, there are systems of matter and energy. And we can see a lot of these systems at work in our natural environment. I and mean, look at Abby back here. She's a system of matter and energy. And our seasons and the way we get heat from the sun, that's a system of energy. There are some systems you can't see. There are large systems underneath the surface of the earth that are hidden from our view and that happen really slowly over time. So we build models to help understand those systems. And there are other systems that are kind of invisible to us. There are systems like the carbon cycle. You know, here I am outside and I can't see the wind that's blowing the leaves and the trees, but I know the wind is still there even though I can't see it. I can feel it. And within that air, there's a lot of different elements, but one of them in particular is called carbon. Now, carbon's a pretty special element. You find it all over. It's found in the crust of the earth and minerals in the rocks. It's found in every living thing. It's in our DNA or it's in our RNA. I, I forget, I'm not a biology guy. There's even carbon in the hydrosphere. There's dissolved carbon in the water that cycles through the oceans and rivers and the water that's in the atmosphere. It's also found in Abbey. It's found in all of our energy sources that come from the earth, like coal, oil, and natural gas. Those are all products of once living organisms that broke down over millions of years and turned into the fossil fuel resources that we use in our everyday lives. Now the carbon cycle is a really good example of how Earth's spheres are connected in a system of matter and energy. Small example, there's Abby, she just popped up and woke up over there. She's probably wanting to chase a bee or something. And she's breathing. And as she exhales, she's putting out carbon dioxide. You see, that's the thing about carbon. It exists in a lot of different forms. It attaches itself to other things, carbon by itself or carbon dioxide. It's just carbon partnered up with a couple of oxygens. But what we have going on here is Abby is producing carbon dioxide, and so am I as we're breathing, but then the trees take in that carbon dioxide through photosynthesis and pump back out oxygen. And then we breathe in that oxygen and that whole process starts over again. That's a small part of the system of matter and energy that we see within the carbon cycle. So we're gonna take a look at the carbon cycle as an example of a system of matter and energy. And there's some terms that we have to get to know. And here they are. First one is biomass. And that's the mass of all the living things in one group. So you could have all the dogs together and that's the mass, the biomass of the dogs. Next one's called carbon reservoir, and that's just any part of Earth's spheres that stores carbon. So again, I mentioned that carbon can be in the atmosphere, that's a reservoir, it can be in the water, so the hydrosphere can be a reservoir. There's carbon in the geosphere, there's carbon in the biosphere, and those are all reservoirs of carbon. Now it's different than a carbon sink. Carbon sink is a part of a carbon reservoir that takes in carbon, but it could also hold it for a very long time. That's how fossil fuels are made. The geosphere holds on to carbon. It's a carbon sink, and it takes that carbon and it converts it into fossil fuels, which are all carbon-based. Now, I just mentioned fossil fuels. These are carbon-based energy sources. You know them as coal and oil and natural gas. The gasoline you put in your car or in a lawnmower, that's all carbon-based oil energy sources. Uh, natural gas, maybe you turn on the stove or a gas grill. That gas is all carbon-based. And then we have charcoal. If you've ever used a charcoal grill, um, or maybe you've seen a coal burning power plant, these are all carbon-based energy sources, these fossil fuels. And the reason why they're called fossil fuels is because they take the carbon or the energy from once living things that are now dead or their fossils, extract the carbon, and then fuel is made from those over millions of years. We got three to go. There are greenhouse gases. And greenhouse gases, well, they're gases in the atmosphere that kind of act like a greenhouse. And what that means is they take in energy and they hold on to that energy, that radiant energy. Next term that you're gonna hear about is lithosphere. It's a fancy term for the outside crust of Earth. There's a little more detail to it that we're gonna get into later, but we can really just consider the lithosphere right now, the outside shell or the outside crust of Earth. And then the last one is photosynthesis. You've heard of this term before, I'm sure you talked about it in biology, but photosynthesis is a system of matter and energy where 
sunlight helps plants, trees, etc., take in carbon dioxide and let out oxygen. We need photosynthesis to live because, well, we need oxygen to breathe. And it's the process of photosynthesis that takes in that carbon dioxide that we are exhaling right now as I'm talking and as Abby's breathing, and it takes in that carbon dioxide, it breaks it down, and it pumps back out oxygen. So those are all the timbers that we need to know. Now, I know that's a lot, but keep your eye on the bigger picture. The reason why we're talking about the carbon cycle is because it is a system of matter and energy.